good afternoon hope you all had a nice time and did your homework hope you had had time to do some thinking about what we had discussed last time now today I'm going to be speaking a little bit about the issues of diversity and how we uh, deal the issue of variety of diversities in social group work. Now, we are living in a society which is not a monolithic society anymore. We have got a great deal of diversity on variety of diversity of issues. We have got diversity on race, we have got diversity on ethnicity, we have got diversity with regarding to economic status, we have got diversity, religious diversity, we are going to have diversity with regarding to age, we have got diversity with regarding to gender and gender orientation, and so this, this list goes endlessly. And now with globalization, this has become so big that any social work interventions or for that matter any work related to human beings that if we do not be sensitive to the difference and differences that we our pursuit of whatever we are trying to work or achieve will be affected now with regard to social work, we start with a cardinal principle that we accept every person for what he or she is. We accept the principle of non-judgmental attitude. We also accept the principle of worth of human dignity. Now these are the cardinal principles on which our profession was based on. Now, it was an important one, but at the same time, we did not have to deal with different issues of diversity. Because we worked with people who looked same, who belonged to the same institutions, who had the same lifestyle, who lived almost many times in the same kind of a neighborhood and spoke the same language, ate the same food and so on and so forth. But if you take a country, even a small island like Singapore, they have got a variety of uh, ethnicities, religions, languages and they are been living together harmoniously and you hardly ever hear that any kind of uh, a conflict based on diversity uh, and this kind of a heterogeneous makeup is occurring, unlike other parts of the globe. Take the example of uh, ethnic violence in Europe, Africa, Asia, United States. Now, why is this? happening because at a macro level we also have to have that kind of preamble which sets about diversity and acceptance of diversity. I have a way of putting on it that many times we talk about diversity we should have a tolerance of diversity. No thank you. I don't agree with that. I do not believe that tolerance is enough. I think tolerance is a negative way of saying that it's okay for what you are. I'll tolerate you as long as you don't touch my neighborhood or my pocketbook. That is where the de jure and de facto segregation comes in. Because you can pass all the rules and regulations saying that all people are all citizens are equal, but the rules are not implemented by people individually. They have not accepted it. So in group work when we are talking about that kind of a de jure or de facto 
acceptance cannot be there. It has to be universal acceptance. And remember, the word I'm using is acceptance, not tolerance. Acceptance is unconditional acceptance. And that is what we have got to help group members to recognize. You do not have to accept because Johnny is gay. You are not going to treat him because his sexual orientation is different than yours. You do not have to become gay. You do not have to preach for him to say, no, go to my temple or my church or whatever, or pagoda, wherever you want to go, and they will take care of you. That is his right. That is his basic God-given human right. You have nothing to do that things. And in your social group work, you have no place to do that things. I am not a preacher. And we are not theologians. Neither are we a judge or judicial system. So if you are going to work with human beings, we have got to accept that diversity is a fact of life today. All men are created equal. Yes. But all men do not have to take that equality in the sameness as you want it. You have got to accept that from the basis of this macro system within which you are existing. Some communities, some political system, some nations or some families at a small level, at a large level you can take the country. I have friends who are very, quote unquote, traditionally conservative, God-fearing, law-abiding, working, but they also have the same caring, loving relationship with their all three children equally, even though one of their child is a lesbian. They didn't make a distinction by saying that my two other kids are straight and this one is there, therefore I'm not going to accept her. Now that is what you are going to do learn in groups. Don't make it that kind of a pejorative judgment. I'm sorry I'm sounding a little preachy, but this is something which I take it to heart and I really believe it. Now the other part of it that diversity does not mean, remember this carefully, Diversity does not mean deviancy. Diverse behavior does not equate with deviant behavior. Just because they don't accept and form your normative structure of life doesn't mean they are dysfunctional. And that's a good example of Singapore. Look at eating habits. You can go into hawker stalls You'll have an Indian man or woman sitting there and eating with a hand and with law of sambar and rasam. you find a Malay, Malay man eating nasi gurong with a hand sometimes or with spoon and fork and you find a Chinese person sitting there with eating with their chopsticks. Nobody's staring at each other. But the same thing, supposing it happens in another part of this world, there will be some giggles, some messages, my God, how can they eat with hand? How can they do this kind of a things? That is where a classic example of how diversity has been accepted. And if we can do that kind of thing at small macro system level, I think it will be the answer for macro level. We have got to accept that and not just tolerate. Thank you. I hope I have simulated you and this question is not a small and easy one. I think it, this will come again and again and it is going to come to a large extent. Now before I conclude, I want to put one equation. Now you are forming a group. You are forming a group of homemakers. Housewives. I don't like the word housewife, but let's say homemakers. And they are primarily dealing with depression. And there are four women who are married 
and have their husbands. There are two women who are single mothers and they are not the four out of the four they are four stay home mothers. The two of them being single mothers they are working mother and working in a white collar job. The third one she is a woman who is living with a man but in a very dysfunctional behavior and the last woman is also a single mother but her job is not a very straight line acceptable job. She's a uh, lady of the night. Now will you put that group together? These four, two, six, seven, eight women, that four of them are straight homemakers, two of them workers, which woman would you exclude and why? Or would you do that there's a group of women, there are six Chinese women and there's one Indian woman. Would you put that thing in a group? Or would you put five women who are the ages between 30 and 35 and then one woman who is 58? So you look at the diversity from that kind of perspective is very, very... Because 35 year old women they are going to have different issues than the 58 year old woman. The women who are homemakers and staying home will have very different values and different ethics and different concerns towards the woman who is the lady of the night. So you have, why create that kind of an artificial things? This is not a group, the housewives in a suburban city of New York or United States or the housing blocks of Singapore. They might live together, but there's nothing much common and they're not going to socialize with each other. So I think that diversity issue has got to be very carefully done and I've given you different examples and think about it. Until next time we meet again. Thank you.